So let's go ahead and move on to working with uh, retainers. When you do with retainers, you're going to be doing two invoices. The invoice that you use to tell your customer to pay you the retainer and the invoice that you use to tell QuickBooks that you have consumed that retainer. The combination of the two are going to be the full work. So, so th think about this. One invoice is just for the retainer. One invoice is for the work minus the retainer. And for as long as there is a retainer available on file, uh, you're going to be using a retainer item to track this. So the first invoice looks like this, is a retainer and the dollar amount. And the second invoice will look more like this, where you actually see the things that you're charging for, whatever it is, right? Hours, copies, stamps, billable expenses. And then you're going to see a negative amount at the end, uh, making the invoice essentially zero. What this will do is it will move the retainer from the retainer liability on the balance sheet and into uh, your revenue. That's essentially what that's doing. And at the end, at the end we're going to run the retainer report and kind of see how to tell which customer has uh, what in retainer uh, on file. Okay. You can also run a retainer liability summary report, and it's going to be a custom uh, project for this. So we're going to do a sales by customer summary and only pick that item. And that's how we're going to be able to know across the board, all the customers that have a retainer on file. Okay. So that's the example that we're going to do. So let me switch over to QuickBooks. Nope, that wasn't it. That was it. Okay, perfect. So we're switched over onto uh, QuickBooks here. And uh, let's talk about setting up a retainer. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click on the gear menu. And then we're going to click on products and services. In here, I created an item called retainer. I'm going to click on edit so I can show you what it has. It's just basically called retainer. That's really all it is. And I have the income account, and I'm doing air quotes here. The income account is actually not an income account. It's an other current liability account called retainer liability. Okay? So you have to do that. You have to create the retainer liability. Now, you also have to uh, make sure, and this is sort of a side component of this, you have to make sure you have a separate bank account, which is a trust account, which is where the money physically goes into. Okay, the, the, the money portion where the money goes has nothing to do with this item. This has to do with the accounting effect of the retainer, which is, hey, I, I received some money that is not income, it's a liability, and I'm going to turn it into income eventually. The, uh, the, uh, the bank account, the trust account is a different entity, a different concept altogether. Okay, so we'll talk about that pretty soon. Okay, so we have an item called retainer, and that's going into retainer liability, which is an other current liability. I'm going to click on save and close. So once the item is set up, then I can start invoicing. So let's say I want to go into my customers here real quick. Let me go into uh, my customers. And let's pick uh, this customer here. Let's pick the XYC uh, Corp customer that's in here, which doesn't have any invoices uh, so far, we can cancel that one. And let's say we're going to go ahead and collect a retainer for this customer. So we're going to create a new invoice just for this customer. And we have to make sure that we use the correct project. Now, you have two options in this case. You could invoice the entire customer and then apply it to multiple projects. To simplify, I'm actually going to invoice the project itself. So I'm going to use uh, the project itself. And then I'm going to take a retainer of three thousand dollars okay so here under class i'm going to use uh documents which is the class that i'm using for formation documents contracts that sort of thing and then i say the attorney in this case is going to be george lopez okay so i'm going to go ahead and on uh august 13 which when is, is the day that the customer came into my office i'm going to uh, send them a retainer for three thousand dollars and that's how we're going to get started with the work so that's how we'll get started. We'll do a retainer, an invoice for the retainer, and, um, and, and that's it. I don't have to do anything else. So I click on save and close. Now, eventually, I will get paid, right? So I'm going to go into uh, receive payment. Most of the times, they pay on the spot, right? Depending on the relationship. We'll pick uh, our customer here. 
let's say on the on the 13th our customer gave us a check check number 1155 and it's going to be deposited into a trust account just for, for for the sake of this example i'm going to create another trust account so i'm going to create a trust i'm going to call it trust for uh retainers so let's say for example that this attorney has a trust account for retainers and then a trust account for something else that is possible though some attorneys like to have multiple trust accounts although it's not the not the case but i created a separate bank account called trust for retainers and that's the trust account in which i'm going to use to receive my customers money from invoices that i haven't earned yet okay so i'm going to go ahead and click on uh save and close now here's a comment from elizabeth which i think is a really really good comment what happens if uh the and, and Actually, let me do that example. I love your comment, Elizabeth, and the question. What happens if they pay you with a credit card and the money goes straight into the operating account? Then you would just do a transfer, okay? Let's say, let, let's do that example. Let's say they paid me $1,500 in check and $1,500 with a credit card. So the check is gonna go straight into the trust account, okay? So we're, we're good to go. The, the $1,500 will go straight into the, 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 the trust account. Let's say that the, the credit card, I'm going to pick the same customer here. Let's say they pay me with a credit card now, the other 1500 that goes into the operating account. So I'm going to click here, operating account. Okay, so for whatever reason, our merchant account is set up to hit my operating account, not my trust account. So the money is actually going into the wrong account because this is, this is um, retainer money. So retainer money should never, ever go into an operating account, but for whatever reason, my merchant account is tied to my operating account. That's possible, we can do that. So I got the credit card, uh, uh, I swiped it, and the money went into my operating account. I must immediately, I'm gonna click save and close. I have to immediately do a transfer and physically transfer the money, or not immediately when the money comes in, physically transfer the money from the operating account into my trust for retainer, because I should never, ever, ever have trust money or retainer money in my operating account. So I'm gonna click uh, save and close. Now, the caveat to this is that some attorneys call retainers money that's not retainer, money that's basically an upfront legal fee that contractually will not be returned to the, co to the uh, customer and contractually you will not track time. So let's say for example, I'm an attorney and I say, I'll charge you a $2,500 flat fee to do this work. Some attorneys wrongfully use the term retainer to talk about that, but that has nothing to do with a retainer. Um, because a retainer in theory is money they give you and then you consume the hours, consume the charges and charge against that retainer and that money is not yours until you can prove that you consumed it. If you charge a flat fee as an attorney, that's not a retainer even if you call it retainer and I have that fight with attorneys all the time where they say, yeah, I took a flat fee retainer for 2,500, that doesn't make any sense. Okay, so you gotta make sure the terminology is correct for this concept to work, right? Because it's just not gonna work if you don't <laughs> make sure of that. Anyway, I'm gonna go into reports and I'm gonna click on balance sheet. And notice that I have in my bank account called trust for retainers, I have my $3,000 there. That's what it's supposed to go. And in my retainer liability, I have 3,100 because I, I could have other transactions sitting in there too. That's probably what the case is. So I'm gonna click on the $3,100 in there. And then I'm gonna click on group by, I'm gonna group it by customer. So I'm gonna group it by customer and then click on uh, run report. And then you can see uh, all the monies that are affecting my, my account. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and delete uh, a couple of things that were here before. This is uh, me. Uh, preparing for uh, the work here. So I'm gonna delete everything else that's in here just so we can look at the one transaction that we are that we are working with. So I'm just gonna leave that one um, invoice that's hitting my retainer. That's the total money that I owe to my customers on retainer. It's just that uh, $3,000 and that's it. Okay, then let's say I'm gonna go ahead and invoice uh, this customer. So I'm gonna go ahead and invoice my customer and I'll pick my project here. I'm just gonna click add all here. So let's say for example, this is what the invoice is gonna look like. 
Then at the end, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one more line. This is the kicker here. I'm going to add one more line to retainer, and then I'm going to make this amount negative the same total amount. So I have the negative 948.75 as a line in the retainer. So we got retainer, and then we have negative 948.75. Okay. So once this is done, uh, the invoice uh, 948, I think it was now. 78. Then once this is done, the invoice is going to net to zero, and that's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to uh, end at zero, and then the invoice, uh, invoicing process in this case will be complete. In the description, I will put here uh, invoice 813-2019 number. Now, this is a bit, um, it is a bit uh, redundant, but I, I, I like to put uh, sort of a uh, the invoice number uh, here and the date of the invoice. I'm gonna click on save. So I post an invoice number, which is 1101, and then go back and put it uh, here in the description. So I'm putting invoice 813-1101, and then I'll click on save and close. So that what that will do is, essentially when I go back into reports, and I go back to a balance sheet, and then go into my retainer liability, I can see exactly what's in my retainer liability. So I'm going to click on that. And my balance on my retainer liability is 2,051.25. Now, once I created the invoice and I have charged it against the retainer, what I need to do now is I need to transfer the money from my uh, trust account, from my trust for retainer account into my operating account because I officially have earned the money. So typically what you do is you want to make sure that your retainer liability account matches your trust account balance in this case or my trust for retainer account balance let me let me delete this one too to avoid any additional confusion here because i had some additional things done before the webinar so i just got this trust for retainers account with three thousand dollars and my retainer liability is 2051 so at this point i'm just going to transfer that difference into my operating account so i'm going to go here into transfer i'm going to go from my trust for retainers into my operating 948.75. I can put here invoice 1101 XYC Corp. Now, this memo is not necessarily the attorneys that I work with are obsessed with memos and they put in every single memo every single thing. In theory, you don't have to because you know the money is accounted for based on that retainer, but it will be valuable to at least ha have the invoice number there to know exactly uh, why that money is being uh, transferred. So I'm gonna click on save and close. And now my trust account for retainer matches my retainer account 100%. So I'm gonna create an invoice here and do another retainer to an, a different customer. So I'm gonna pick a different customer here. And then I'm gonna do a retainer and let's make this one 6,500. And I'll date this August 1st. I'm going to click on save and new. But then I'm going to invoice the same customer some work. So I'll pick here hours. And let's say we're charging 10 hours at $400 a piece. And we're going to add a retain. We're going to do the negative retainer here so we can charge against the retainer. So I did uh, two invoices essentially with retainers because I want to show you multiple lines in there. So I'm going to click on uh, save and close. And then once that invoice is created, remember my retainer uh, liability account needs to match my trust for retainer account. So I should have received that dollar for that 6,500. And I do wanna remind you of something too. Don't create retainer invoices if they don't pay you, okay? So, um, so if the customer doesn't pay you, delete the invoice or just leave it in estimate mode. Don't create the retainer invoice until the customer pays you because you're going to inflate the retainer liability account uh, uh, in vain. So not, not supposed to do that. So I'm immediately receiving uh, the money for that, uh, that retainer as well. Save and close. So I got my trust for retainer, which is 8,551, and my retainer liability, 4,551. The reason why that's off is because um, I'm supposed to make that transfer. So I'm going to click here on, on, on customize reports here real quick. And I'm going to go to uh, filter. 
And um, actually, not, not, not that yet. Let me do the transfer first. Let me do the transfer. So let's create it, the transfer because I'm going to show you one more thing and go from my trust account to my operating to account for the $4,000. So I'll do 1103, whatever it was, and Hector Garcia. Okay, so I'm transferring the money because I earned that. And then some people like to use a sales receipt instead of an invoice for retainer. You can do that, and that's totally fine. Um, I'm actually, I, I encourage that uh, quite often as well. Uh, but, um, but for the people that like for the document to say invoice, um, then obviously you would have to use uh, the invoice itself. But if you use a sales receipt instead of an invoice, then you're forced to create it and receive the payment simultaneously. So you don't ever run into the situation where by mistake, um, <clears throat> by mistake, you create the invoice and leave the invoice open and, and mess something up in the in the process okay so now i gotta I'll, I'll always make sure my trust account matches my retainer liability now i'm going to show you one thing here which is when i click on retainer liability and click on group by customer we can easily see uh the the 4551 what customer it belongs to but this is going to become a really big list as you add more customers to the list so i'm going to show you a trick to have a, re a summary report for the retainer balance by customer. So, and this is really a workaround. So we're gonna go to reports, and then we're gonna look for sales by customer summary. So we're gonna do sales by customer summary. Okay, and it's gonna show you me all my sales. I'm gonna put here dates all, and click on run report. And then on the sales by customer summary, I'm gonna click on customize, go into filter, go into products and service, and pick retainer. So by doing that, I'm going to show a report of only my retainers. I click on run report. Really important that you do an all dates up here. So when you do this, you can actually have a summary retainer report. So QuickBooks Online doesn't have a custom summary report, but this is the best way uh, to do that. So I'm going to click on customize. Go to header and footer. I'm going to call it retainer balance by customer. Click on save and then click on save customization and click on save and now when I go into reports and I go into custom reports there's my retainer balance by customer run it and then you can automate it automatically email it to the lawyers uh, whatever it happens to be 